Hello, my name is Jeff Shaw, and this is In the Studio, recorded live at Davis Media Access. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about Uber. Uh, I'd like to let you know that uh, in 2013, a Princeton researcher found that 30% of drivers who started in the first half of that year had stopped working for Uber a year later. Uh, this has precipitated uh, Uber needing new, um, new drivers, and new drivers for Uber need new cars, so Uber formed Exchange Leasing LLC. Uh, Goldman Sachs led a deal to get Exchange a large credit facility, uh, over $1 billion in fact, which is basically a line of credit that Exchange, i.e. Uber, uses to lease cars out. Uh, also in the deal are Goldman Sachs, uh, Citigroup, Deutsche Bank, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, SunTrust, a lot of these banks that we've heard before. Anyway, Exchange Leasing LLC partners, uh, Exchange Leasing LLC is the leasing company. They partner with auto dealerships to lease cars. So this is a new model. Uh, that has recently entered the uh, car leasing market. And with us today is Ernie, uh, who is a local Davisite, long-term Davis local, uh, site, uh, local Davisite, localite. <laughs> um, and uh, Ernie's actually volunteered down at Davis Media Access before. We've known each other for a while. Uh, he recently entered the exchange leasing Uber driving program, and he and I have been uh, talking on social media and other places sort of uh, just to... Uh, get a sense of what this new program is about. And uh, our conversation we have today is by no means to, uh, uh, is just a frank conversation about his experience with this uh, program. So, Ernie, welcome and thanks for coming in oh, today. Thank you, Jeff, I appreciate the invite. Uh, I, my first question, of course, is going to be, uh, why did you, uh, I, I'm kind of guessing that you signed up for this program uh, because you wanted a car. You needed a car for some reason. Um, having a car is certainly advantageous in a lot of different ways, yes, but yes. mostly I needed a job. Okay. Uh, I was working uh, construction remodeling in Pollock Pines, and by the way, that's still gone. I thought it would be over, but mm -hmm. it's still gone. So now I use the car to get to that job. Okay. Um, but so you, so most you, you didn't get the car because you wanted to be an Uber driver. You got it because you uh, needed a car. Because I needed a job. You needed a job. I needed yes. a tool. To, so that I could go from one job into a job that I could have right away. And yes, having a car is a good thing mm -hmm. for a whole host of reasons. And previous mm -hmm. to this, you've, no, you've, you've hardly ever owned a car, is, am I right? I That's am hard. 58 years old now, and in my whole life, I have, if you take the two cars that I've owned, um, both junkers, that whole time would be about three months. Okay. Uh, so did you look into other car leasing programs before you yes. looked into this program? Yeah. And uh, you, did you com do a compares comparison shopping when you did all of that? I did. Uh-huh. And uh, did you, uh, well, I guess let's actually, let's, uh, well, let, you, the lease that you signed, I guess I'm wondering, did you read the whole thing before you signed up for I it? I did. And, and uh, you sort of looked at some of the trade-offs with other leases and you I decided did. that the weekly cost for this particular lease is, is it better than the other ones or is well, it, was there, it a... there are more factors than just the cost. Okay. Now, I think I read every word, but maybe not every right. word. There may have been some places where, you know, uh, where I scanned. Okay. But essentially I read the whole thing and I had a friend of mine who's a lawyer also read it. Oh. Um, and the cost is insanely expensive. Right. Um, Generally for like, for, and what I read is that uh, of the year of a, the term of the lease is three years. Three years. And you end up spending, you end up paying six thousand, seven thousand dollars more than the actual value of the car, uh, you know, given the term of the lease. Yes. Just due to interest and due to payments and everything, which is typical yeah. for a lot of car leasing programs. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah, I'm paying per week, approximately what some people who could get a, another type of lease mm -hmm. would pay for a month. But one key difference is that I have access to unlimited miles. Okay. I can put 150,000 miles on that car. and A lot and of other leases have limitations. Yeah, very, very tight, very tight limitations, Bef and you pay a lot to go over those. Before we get into some of the specifics, I wanted there are to... More. There's more. I know. Anyhow, I, I want yeah. to get uh, your thought on... I don't know if you've been following sort of the subprime auto leasing stuff in the, that's been going on in the media. No, like, I haven't. So... Um, 
Uh, this executive vice president of the Center for Responsible Lending says the subprime, subprime auto is sort of the hot new place to get in the securities market. There are some similar things going on in the auto market that look a lot like what was going on in the mortgage market pre-crash, hmm. which uh, I don't know. You know, that's kind of, those are, I wonder what your thought was on that quote. Or uh, a, a friend of mine thought it would not be a good idea for me to do this because uh -huh. they considered this to be predatory lending. Right. Um, but... I have access to a tool to right. make money that I didn't have access to before. Yes. So now it's mostly up to me to utilize that tool. Yes. So even though I'm paying a lot for this car, I because I, I ruined my credit and, and I'm working on repairing that. But uh, first of all, I couldn't put together a down payment to get a car mm -hmm. that if going with the regular lease, then right. we have the unlimited miles. and. The down payment for the Uber lease is really low. Okay. It's like $250 and you're in. Well, you have to buy the insurance, which, you know, they're going to want a couple hundred dollars down. Right. So for less than $500, including the insurance, I can get into a car. Okay, so let's show a picture of the car that you, uh, of you getting into a car, I believe. <laughs> and uh, what, this is a car, uh, what kind of car is this? It's a Honda Fit, 2016 Honda Fit. Okay. Um, EX. And so did you have to buy insurance? You have to buy insurance for the yes, car. Yes, and, and there's special insurance when you're, when you're working a transportation network. Uh -huh. um, you can't just have any insurance. You need to have a, a rider uh, on your policy that allows you to use that car in a transportation network. Okay, and so... Like Uber or Lyft. Are there limitations on what you can use the car with according no. to the insurance policy? No, just keep it legal. But you oh, yes. You can't use it for... Yes, there actually there are limitations. You can't use it for some of the services that Lyft offers, like uh, food delivery or package delivery. Uh -huh. They have some limitations. So like you that. mentioned Lyft is another uh, car share uh, car. With it. What, what would you call Uber and Lyft as far as their uh, transportation network? It, it's services like a type. services. Okay. Yeah. So there's limitations. Say that again. That you can you can't under the insurance you can't use the car for certain things or for. Uh, package delivery. Okay. Um, Uber offers a service where you can have food or packages delivered, um, like Amazon would might call us and say, you know, do that. Yeah. Um, the insurance say people say don't do that under any circumstances. Do not do that. Okay. So otherwise, so, you violate the terms of your insurance. If you got in an accident while you're doing that, you won't be covered. Yeah. Uh, I, okay. So let's let's move on a little bit to uh, how does you so you have to do a weekly payment. Mm -hmm. And you have to, uh, you, the money that you pay comes directly out of what you earn. Is that how it works? Yes. For, for the, Uber or Uber takes their cut first. They take 25% off the top. Right. And then exchange leasing at the beginning of the week on Mondays, they take the lease out of whatever I earned for that week. Right. And um, if I didn't make it, then it rolls over. So you, I mean, yeah. if you didn't, if you didn't make your payment for the week, it can add up. Pretty quick, I assume. I would assume it does. I just don't let that happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I use the car to go to Pollock Pines, and I make money there. I see. And because I'm driving Uber part time right now, uh, actually I'm paying for the car with the job in Pollock Pines mostly. Gotcha. So I pay the lease the Thursday before it's due on Monday. Okay. And then, and then it's covered. So let's 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 talk about some of the pitfalls that I've read about, and you tell me some of your ex sure. experience. Um, you mentioned that you're going to be paying you're paying for this lease uh, um, through other means, which is mm -hmm. allowed, sure. not through driving for them. Uh, can they deactivate your driver account? I've read where um, a story where some guy got a you have lease in, is in Vallejo, California. His driver account was deactivated. And I'm wondering if you don't drive for them, can your driver account be deactivated? Have you heard of that at all? Or? I, I, I don't know um, what, if there's a time frame like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that would affect the lease, though. Okay. It could affect the Uber driver account. And the Uber driver account and the lease are two separate things. Okay. Even though the, the parent company is connected. Um, there's an there's an umbrella there. And what but, about um, so people who do drive for Uber? And so we'll get we'll talk a little bit about that. Is since mm -hmm. you're driving for Uber, uh, what if they slash fares nationally? I've also heard this where people depend on a certain amount of income, and Uber suddenly slashes or they you know they knock down the fares. So, I mean I know you're a recent driver, but have mm -hmm. you experienced that at all? Or? Um, 
I think the fares are already really, really low. And sometimes it doesn't seem worth it for, like, it, it's a good deal for, for the riders. Uh -huh. But the fares are so low that sometimes the, the trips that I go on actually cost me money. Right. Um, and uh, what about? I can give you an example if you like. Yeah, give me an example. Um, I, I was up by Safeway on Covell, mm -hmm. and I accepted a call, a ride request that was in Woodland. Mm -hmm. So I took that request and went to and, Woodland. And, and you they have were just to do you have to take all no, requests? No. Okay. I, I could not. But it counts against your, your, um, your percentage of acceptance. Okay. So and you get ranked. Everything gets logged. Every little piece of data gets logged. Either counts for you, against you uh, in the long yeah, term. It either okay. looks good or it doesn't look good. Yeah. So you took the ride. And, and the people were just going from, from one place just down the street to, to the drugstore. Mm-hmm. Which is okay, you know, they're entitled to that. But I think they also dinged me on the rating because it took so long to get there. Uh, I can think of no other reason because I treat my people well. I open doors, I treat people like a guest in my home. <laughs> they're a guest in my car, I treat people the best I can. So you're at the uh, mercy of, uh, of their rating of you as well. Yes. To some extent. Yes. And what if gas prices go up? I'm in trouble. And hopefully if gas prices go up, then uh, maybe the fares will go up along with that. Mm -hmm. I would hope there would be some, some consideration for but, that. But uh, you are, again, at the mercy of either sort of uh, Uber changing their rates or um, adapting to the market gas prices. Or yes. you're, uh, of course, yes. um, what other uh, pitfalls <clears throat> have you? Uh, like your like phone service, does it affect your phone? Do you have to have your own? You have to have your own phone. They don't give you a phone yes. to use. Yes. So uh, how does that work? Like it's basically um, uh, you have to have a good phone plan. Yes, and and it has cost me to not have a good phone plan. And yesterday was the last straw with that. I have what is I had and still have what is commonly known as an Obama phone, uh, California Lifeline. Right, Lifeline. Program. And the phone is really wonderful for everyday use. It's a great program for right. people who can't afford a phone. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. However, for Uber. Not so good. Like it, it's really slow. The the data is really slow. Uh -huh. I'm I'm holding a phone here, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, right. I can see <laughs> um, that. Um, so yesterday. <laughs> that might be your problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yesterday, um, I received a ride request, uh -huh. and, and I'm fast on. I, I accept the ride request right away, and and it starts. It's processing. It's processing the ride request, and it took so long for that to process that it dropped, it dropped, it, they treated it as though I didn't accept the request. So you, they, uh, if, you, if there's technical deal problems with the network, with the phone, it get counts against you. Yes, um, yes. So I went to AT&T and I got a good phone, uh -huh. I got a good plan, and I have that now. But that's more money that I have now invested into making right. this work. And again, um, you know, this is sort of a different model of uh, employee sh employeeship. I'm wondering what you think about that. I mean, I know I understand that, you know, l sort of living marginally as far as like um, trying to, you know, make uh, use a tool as you said, to mm -hmm. um, to uh, improve your you know income and all that kind of situation. There's always going to be compromises, but this is definitely like a different model of um, of uh, of being a, not an employee. I should say you're not an employee, Thank but you. a contractor, I guess. Yeah. And I wondered, uh, you know, you're recent to this, but uh, maybe we'll check in with you in a couple months or like okay. a year and see like mm -hmm. how it's going because uh, it is a different model of uh, of being a contractor. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. uh, if you've had insight into that, or, uh, you know, um, given are, the, given that you do have to upfront a lot of these costs that would yeah. normally be taken on by a business. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I am the business. Um, are the there are people who are out there who are Uber drivers who are advocating for employeeship with the company. Um, How do you feel about that? Uh, I haven't given that enough thought. Yeah. I've agreed to their program, so I'm bound by their program, right. and that indicates that I'm, a, I'm an independent contractor. Gotcha. And, and I accept that. And if something changes where you know, there's a possibility of employeeship, I'll consider that. Yeah. When I drove a cab years ago, I had the option of working for the company. I had an option of leasing my own cab. Hmm. And I did it both ways. There are pluses and minuses to both. Right. So if that happens with Uber, you know, I'll, I'll consider it. Uh, last question: have, Do you know some of the local cab drivers, and uh, have you met? Uh, have you any sense of how cab drivers feel about this sort of new model of? Um, 
I do not. I, I know one cab driver, but I haven't seen her recently. It's been a, more than a year. Um, but from my experience, and I don't know about Davis, so I don't want to cast any aspirations on Davis, but my experience, three years of driving a cab, year and a half in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a year and a half in San Diego, um, there are a lot of dishonest people in, in that system, mm -hmm. dispatchers and drivers included. A lot of honest people too, I'm sure. Um, but with the Uber and Lyft systems, it's almost impossible for anyone to cheat anyone. It's right. computerized, everything is tracked. You have GPS, you have, everything is, is pretty tight. And, right, and you have computer. a GPS in your car. And so, on the phone, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they they install in the car part of the part of the. Uh, I was pointing to a picture that wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, part of the prep for the car is that they put a GPS system in there. Right. Uh, so everything is tracked in, and it keeps things more above board, and and people have better access. You know, because you only right. have a few cabs, but you have a lot of Uber. I yeah. would suggest the cab drivers come to Uber or Lyft. Uh huh. You know. Well, we'll see. I mean, it's an interesting, I, I think there's, it can go either way with new technologies, and I think mm -hmm. the jury's still out in a lot of ways on sure. some of these, uh, on some of these mm -hmm. new models. Uh, there's critics on both, on one side, and then there's uh, people like yourself who are actually exploring it and seeing how mm -hmm. you can make it work, so. Oh, I'd like to correct yes. something or clarify. Um, when I say I would suggest cab drivers come over, I would suggest the cab drivers who are negatively affected by mm -hmm. um, this transportation network. Uh, change. Yeah. The one thing they could consider would be to come over right. and, and do that. Um, I know in France, you know, they're protesting against, uh, and actually Aust other cities have you know, banned Uber outright right. or something. So mm. um, it's, it, we'll, we'll be following it. it mm -hmm. I'd like to have you back on at some point just to see like how it's gone. And when did you start this? I can't remember. Uh, exactly. A little more than a month ago. Oh, so it's really recently. Yeah, very so. recent. Uh, and so I've only we'll, been doing a part time so far. So. so we'll check back in in about six months and see uh, how it's working out for you. I think that'll be pretty interesting to hear. And uh, I appreciate you coming in today. I know you're busy. We got to turn the phone back on just in case you get rides <laughs> right away. Actually, I'm on. going to Pollock Pines now to okay. do some work out there over the weekend. Yes. But I'll be back early next week and Ubering about and All lifting. Right. All right. You may see him around town. All right, well, this has been uh, In the Studio. My name is Jeff Shaw. With me has been Ernie today. Uh, you'll maybe see him around town uh, driving his Uber car. And I uh, appreciate him coming in. Hopefully, he'll come back, and we'll check back in on this uh, program that he's enrolled in. So thanks very much for tuning in. This is Davis Media Access.